Picture this. You trudge your way through six inches of snow to walk into your local Tim Hortons on a crisp Canadian morning, eager for your usual caffeine fix before hockey practice. But as you glance at the menu, you notice something unsettling. The price of your beloved Double Double has jumped up by 10 cents overnight, with the small now costing $1.33, medium $1.57, a large $1.71, and an extra large $1.90. This isn't just an isolated spike, it reflects a broader trend. For the first time since 2011, Tim Hortons has raised its coffee prices, citing rising operational costs and a near doubling in Arabica bean prices due to droughts in Brazil. Even breakfast sandwiches, save for those in Ontario, aren't immune, seeing a 10 cent increase to $2.99. These everyday increases, seemingly small, highlight a larger issue, the relentless climb of Canada's cost of living. The good news is that inflation seems to be stabilizing, and the Bank of Canada now has some leeway to pause its interest rate hikes. Inflation has decreased from its June 2022 peak of 8.1% to 2.9% in January and 2.8% in February 2024. For the first time in a long while, Canadians have a glimmer of hope that the worst of the cost of living crisis might be behind them. Unfortunately, for Canadians, things might not be getting much better either, and high prices seem to have cemented themselves as the norm in the country. Prices are no longer exponentially increasing, but they're far from returning to the pre-pandemic levels. In fact, they remain stuck at the high levels pushed up by historically high inflation rates. Year over year, grocery costs are up 5.8%, Although this is a decrease from last year's 11%, it is still a considerable increase for already stretched households. Food costs should be decreasing, but they just aren't. Over the same period, average weekly pre-tax earnings have only risen by 8.2%. A basket of 18 household items that cost $82 in March 2021 now costs $113.32 at Walmart, a 38.2% increase over three years. According to Canada's food price report, the average family of four will see their annual food bill increase by up to $701 this year, reaching $16,297.20. This is seen as a slight relief from last year's $1,065 increase, but it's hardly comforting when food prices should be falling, not rising. The annual rate of inflation has started to come down, but that doesn't mean prices are not still unaffordable for many people notes CIBC senior economist Andrew Grantham speaking to Radio Canada. For example, car prices, while decelerating, are still 10% higher than they were two years ago, with no sign of prices decreasing anytime soon. Even when inflation returns to the Bank of Canada's 2% target, it doesn't mean prices will drop. Instead, prices will continue to rise, albeit at a more manageable rate. Not all areas are seeing progress. According to BOM's chief economist, also interviewed by Radio Canada, Douglas Porter, rent increases may now be the biggest concern on the Canadian inflation front. Canadians are experiencing the fastest rent increase in over 40 years, with average rents up 11% in the last year. The real estate situation is equally grim, which is bad news considering most Canadians spent 35-50% to of their income on housing. The Canadian Real Estate Association reports that while the national benchmark price of a home has fallen from its March 2022 peak of $855,800 to $741,400, this is still over 40% higher than prices at the end of 2019. Financial technology firm RateHub points out that although home prices have decreased, the income needed to afford one has increased due to rising interest rates. However, Canadians shouldn't expect a return to the extremely low interest rates of the past. Meanwhile, asking rents for two-bedroom Toronto apartments has also surged. The average rent is now $3,287, a near 38% increase from March 2021. Cost of living crisis urgency is lost on politicians. Despite this, Political and business leaders seem to believe Canada's economic conditions compare well with other countries and will improve. They note the high interest rates, which have hindered economic growth, are expected to decline this year. The national jobless rate at 5.8% in February is lower than the expected 6.5%, and inflation, now at 2.8%, is down from its 8.1% peak in 2022. However, 
A recent poll by market research company Ledger found that 70% of Canadians feel everything is broken in this country right now, with those surveyed citing rising costs as the main reason for their current dissatisfaction with their country. The dissatisfaction is highest amongst those in Ontario and Alberta, and interestingly higher among women than among men. Older Canadians vaguely recall the double-digit inflation of the 1970s and early 1980s as a nightmare they never expected to face again. Before the pandemic, inflation averaged just 1.7% over a decade and 2.0% over the previous three decades. For those who grew up after 1990, today's high cost of living is a new and unsettling experience. Immigration is another big reason behind the rising cost of living for Canadians. Although Canada is in theory an enormous country, the reality is that the population is packed into a small number of cities on a thin strip of land that straddles the US border, with vast swaths of the country uninhabitable. This means housing and resources are starting to become stretched thin as the population increases rapidly. Federal public servants warned the Canadian government two years ago that increasing immigration could affect housing affordability and services, as shown in documents obtained by the Canadian press. Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada analysed the potential effects of immigration on the economy, housing and services while preparing its 2023 to 2025 targets. They noticed that housing construction had not kept pace with population growth, leading to a misalignment between the two. In 2022, officials warned that rapid population growth due to immigration was putting pressure on housing and healthcare. Despite these concerns, the government still decided to increase the number of permanent residents to 500,000 per year by 2025, nearly double the number from 2015. This decision has sparked scrutiny, especially as housing affordability becomes a political liability for the Liberal government. Recent data shows that Canada's population grew by over 430,000 in the third quarter of 2023, the fastest pace since 1957. Experts, including those from the Bank of Canada, have warned that strong population growth is pushing rents and home prices upwards. Public opinion is also shifting, with increasing concern about the impact of immigration on services and infrastructure. As the population of Canada grows older, politicians worry that this will slow down economic growth and seek to remedy it with increasing immigration. However, this makes things more expensive for Canadian citizens. However, the rise in non-permanent residents, such as international students and temporary foreign workers, has raised additional concerns about reliance on low-wage migrant workers and the operations of some post-secondary institutions. Public servants noted that while increasing the working age population can boost GDP, it has little effect on the GDP per capita, suggesting that higher immigration may not significantly improve living standards. Canada needs a new economic governance model, which accelerates affordable housing construction, raises minimum wages and properly funds food banks, which are now turning away people due to higher demand and limited supplies. In January 2024, in response to the housing and affordability crises, exacerbated by over 800,000 international students in Canada, Immigration Minister Mark Miller announced an immediate 35% cut in student visas for the next two years. This reduction will decrease the number of incoming international students by 364,000 over this period. Miller also introduced a requirement for visa applicants to provide a provincial attestation confirming that the institution they plan to attend is not a bad actor. This measure targets institutions likened to diploma mills and individuals who enter Canada on student visas but do not enrol in college or university. A Statistics Canada report revealed that up to 25% of those who entered on study permits in 2019 did not attend post-secondary institutions. Miller emphasised that these changes aim to ensure future students receive the quality education promised by Canadian institutions, rather than targeting individual international students. He highlighted issues such as the housing crisis, which has seen home prices rise by 40% over five years and rents for two-bedroom apartments increase by 9.6% annually. The shortage is partly due to a lack of new housing construction and a significant influx of immigrants, including international students who often struggle to find accommodation. Ongoing investments such as the Canada Child Benefit, affordable childcare, housing construction and enhanced benefits for seniors are making life more affordable and improving access to housing. 
Investment in economic growth and competitiveness are paying off, with Canada receiving the highest per capita foreign direct investment in the G7 in the first three quarters of 2023. Canada could look to strengthen its social safety net with universal basic income UBI, and living wages that reflect local living costs. Pilot UBI projects show promise in providing sufficient guaranteed income for families to live comfortably. Currently, 620 Ontario employers pay a living wage, calculated at $25.05 per hour in Toronto, compared to the $16.55 minimum wage. As well as cracking down on student visas, Canada has extended its ban on foreign home buyers for an additional two years, now set to expire on January 1, 2027, as the real estate market shows signs of a rebound. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's government initially prohibited non-Canadians from purchasing residential real estate in 2022 to address housing affordability issues in cities like Toronto and Vancouver. Finance Minister Christia Freeland stated that the extension aims to ensure houses serve as homes for Canadian families rather than speculative assets. Exemptions to the ban include non-Canadians buying vacant land or property for development, foreign students, and people on work permits who have resided in the country for an extended period without owning property. The housing market has begun to heat up as the Bank of Canada may soon cut interest rates. In December, the national benchmark home price was $730,400 Canadian dollars, a 36% increase over five years, with prices reaching 1.2 million Canadian dollars in Greater Vancouver and 1.1 million Canadian dollars in Greater Toronto. Various government measures aim to cool housing costs. Toronto City Council will consider a motion to tax home purchases by non-residents at 10% of the property value in addition to Ontario's 25% non-resident speculation tax.